Throughout the centuries, thousands of people were sent to the gallows for their executions. During the Second World War, the remaining members of Hitler's government who had been condemned to death were taken into the gymnasium of Nuremberg Prison, where they were then hanged and executed on the gallows by notorious American executioner John C. Woods. Some executions on the gallows did not go well throughout history. For example, a number of those that happened at Nuremberg were botched with the Nazi war criminals smashing their heads against a trap door as they fell through. But the first mention of hanging dates back to Homer's Odyssey, and it was an execution method which has been used for millennia, but there have been different variations of this used throughout the centuries. Join us today as we look at the gallows as one of history's most brutal execution methods, and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. There are a number of specific methods in which hanging was used for executions. One of the most common which has been used is a short drop, which is where a prisoner would stand on a raised platform. This could be a stool, ladder or other platform, then this was taken away and someone was left dangling from the rope and the noose. They are suspended by their neck and the weight of the victim tightens the noose and mostly people die through strangulation and it can take around 10 or 12 minutes for someone then to be pronounced dead. Throughout history this has been used for the executions of many, and was part of the execution method hanged, drawn and quartered, in which following a number of minutes where the condemned person was hanged using the short drop, when they were almost dead, they were cut down for their execution ordeal to then continue. One man who did escape this was Guy Fawkes, who whilst he was being led up the ladder to be hanged by the short drop, he jumped off the scaffold and actually broke his neck, but then his body was still subjected to the execution anyway. It was the most common method used on the gallows before the 1850s, but then executioners looked for other methods as they wanted to make execution methods quicker, as a short drop could take some time and was considered less humane. Another variant of the gallows which was used in Austro-Hungary and in the two countries following their separation and independence was the pole hanging. But inside of Hungary following the Second World War outside the Academy of Music in Budapest, a number of condemned war criminals who supported the Nazis would be executed using the pole method. The gallows with this was replaced by a stake, and someone would be executed on this. It had a number of steps and was more complicated. First the condemned would be stood on the three metre high pillar or pole, and a rope was then tied around their feet and then through a pulley at the bottom of the stake. Then the condemned was hoisted to the top of the pole, through a sling across their chest. Then a noose was looped around their neck and was secured to a hook at the top of the pole, and when the chest sling was released, the victim then plunged down, and the executioner would put his hand between the jaw of the prisoner to increase the force on the neck, and then would desiccate the neck of the condemned. One famous case of this being used was on Nazi war criminal Karl Hermann Frank, who was believed executed a thousand people using this method during his time in control during the Second World War. Another method used was a standard drop, which is where a victim would drop between four and six feet, and this was developed by an Irish doctor named Samuel Houghton. It was devised as a way of speeding up executions and was considered more humane, as the drop was supposed to be enough to break the victim's neck, causing quicker death. This was used following the Second World War to execute those Nazi war criminals mentioned earlier following the Nuremberg trials, such as Jerkin von Ribbentrop, Hans Frank and Ernst Kaltenbrunner. The account of Ribbentrop's execution alludes to the executioner's mistakes as it says, the hangman botched the execution and the rope throttled the former foreign minister for 20 minutes before he expired. Another account said, The trap fell open and with a sound midway between a rumble and a crash, Ribbentrop disappeared. The rope quivered for a while, then stood tautly straight. We know that those executions at Nuremberg in their most extreme did not go right due to problems with the rope and the length, and the drops which were calculated were incorrect or they did not achieve the velocity and speed which was needed to snap the necks. This has led to John C. Woods getting a notorious reputation for being a botching executioner, who at one point it's believed, even pulled down on one of the bodies to finish off the execution behind the curtain. But what is considered possibly the most successful execution method on the gallows was developed in Britain and was known as a long drop. William Marwood is the executioner who developed this, and instead of everyone falling the same distance through a trap door, the height and weight of the condemned was used to determine how much slack in the rope would be needed to ensure that the distance dropped would be enough to snap the neck. But the worry with this was that the head could come off if calculated poorly and there needed to be careful placement of the knot of the noose. 
This went wrong with Blackjack Ketchum's execution, as the outlaw would lose his head when he plunged through the trap door. This also happened when the murderess, Ava Duggan, in 1930, had a botched execution in Arizona. One man who was considered very skilled in this practice was Albert Pierpoint, the British executioner who would execute hundreds of Nazis under British jurisdiction, and he would, it's believed, execute some in just a matter of seconds, with the record being seven seconds from entering the execution chamber until the drop was opened. The British were keen on speed with executions to avoid the mental stress of the impending execution on the victim. Throughout history, some added pain has been added onto the gallows, as some countries would, whilst one was on the gallows, cut and inflict other serious wounds to the body. This could obviously lead to someone bleeding out. Of course, it is still used as an execution method all around the world, but in England the process dates back from the Anglo-Saxon period. There were many hangmen who would work across Britain, and the last British execution using hanging took place in 1964. Hangings were often performed in public before, and this was only changed in 1868, when they occurred inside of special execution chambers, which were then set up in prisons, away from the gaze of the public. There were a number during the Second World War who were executed in this manner, including traitors such as John Amory and William Joyce, Lord Haw-Haw. As time went on, the amount of capital offences diminished, and the last woman to be hanged was Ruth Ellis, whose execution took place on the 13th of July 1955, with the last hanging being carried out altogether, as mentioned, in 1964. In America, hanging was brought over by the Puritans, and capital punishment does vary from state to state but the largest mass execution in America saw 38 Sioux Indians executed on the gallows, and some of the most infamous executions using this method saw one woman and three men executed for their involvement in the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln. Shockingly also it has been used for lynchings in certain states, and throughout history there have been many people who were strung up in trees just for the colour of their skin, and these horrifically would gather a large crowd. There is a case where throughout the years, someone has been hanged on the gallows upside down also. This was used mostly as a form of torture, and was used in medieval Germany. The gallows is considered one of history's most common execution methods, but it was also a rather horrific one, as throughout the years, executions did take some time, and the ordeals for the condemned could last a long time. Efforts were made to speed this up, but of course things could go wrong very often. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.